Welcome to Sound Nerd's Doodle Tutor Series. This video will walk you through a basic protocol for imaging the kidneys and bladder by ultrasound. We'll take a look at recognizing major landmarks within the kidney, draw and label diagrams for each image, and cover some tips that might help. Ultrasound is a great tool to evaluate the physical appearance of the kidney. We can image cysts and hydronephrosis easily. Congenital anomalies and solid masses within the kidney can be seen well, and if they're big enough, we can even see renal stones. Ultrasound is also used to evaluate the blood flow into the kidneys to assess for renal artery stenosis. The bladder is easily visible as a fluid-filled structure in the pelvis. Ultrasound can be used to estimate pre- and post-void volumes of urine, stone formation, and the presence of ureteral jets. The normal ureters are not visualized, but can be seen lateral to the bladder if they're dilated. Before taking images of the right kidney, sweep through the kidney in the longitudinal window. This will give you an idea where your best window is, how to breathe your patient, and how to adjust your TGCs appropriately. The inferior pole of the kidney can sometimes be hard to see because of overlying bowel. Next, turn your transducer 90 degrees and you'll be set up to see the right kidney in transverse. Sweep all the way out of the superior pole and then all the way through the inferior pole as cysts can be exophytic or hanging away from the main body of the kidney. Note that the kidney sits slightly oblique in the body, so you'll need to adjust your rotation to keep the kidney rounded. When you're ready to take images of the left side, it's again a good idea to sweep through the left kidney in long. Elongate the kidney and sweep side to side. Make sure that you go all the way through the parenchyma in both directions. Ribs and bowel on the left side can make this side a little bit trickier. Try to use the spleen as a window. Lastly, sweep through the kidney in transverse. You should be able to see if there's any pathology when you are sweeping your organs. If you don't see any, then you know your images will just be the basic protocol to show that you look through the parenchyma. Think of your sweeps as making a game plan. You can see from our protocol images that you should move through the kidney in a very systematic way. We measure at the mid portions in both planes and will evaluate for perfusion. As usual, this list is a basic protocol for the kidneys and bladder. You won't always need the bladder images, or you may be required to include more images and measurements such as pre and post void residuals. Check with your institution to learn specific protocols. When moving through the kidney in the longitudinal plane, pay attention to the shape of the kidney and the visualization of the hypoechoic cortex and the hyperechoic sinus. The lateral image has very little to no sinus within. The mid picture is the longest slice and often shows kind of pointy ends with even sinus and cortex all around. The medial portion will show a shortened kidney again with less sinus and a break at the hilum. This gives the image more of a telephone shape. Take a moment to watch this graphic and the expected shapes. In transverse, try to keep your kidney as round as possible. The superior pole has either the liver or spleen nearby, but not always. And you should also see little to no sinus in the superior pole. However, you do not want to stop at a portion that does not clearly look like renal parenchyma. The midsection takes on more of a C-shape with the hilum break facing the patient's center. The inferior pole looks very similar to the superior pole, but without the liver and spleen. It should be round with little to no renal sinus. If you're drawing along, make sure to have your paper and pen now. If you want to print out pre-made sectors, check out the link in the description box. After each image is completed, you will see that the entire image turns white. This would be a great time to pause the video and finish your drawing. Try to find a good representation of the kidney at mid. You'll fan your transducer towards the patient's right, watching for the sinus to disappear. When you have a good representation of the borders and the kidney parenchyma, stop and save an image at the lateral portion. The kidney appears hypochoic compared to a normal liver, which sits superior to the kidney. Very little sinus should be seen, if any. Make sure that you can see all the borders of the kidney. The quadratus muscle is in the lateral plane inferior to the kidney.
To get back to mid, start sweeping or fanning the transducer away from you. Watch for the poles of the kidney to lengthen and become more pointy. The cortex of the kidney should be seen all the way around a sizable view of the sinus. You will measure this image in longitudinal and AP. The average size of the kidney is 9 to 12 centimeters in length. However, most healthy adults will average closer to the 11 centimeter range. Take a mental note of the length measurement. You do not want adult kidneys to be more than 2 centimeters different in length. You may also need to measure the cortex in this image. The liver should still be seen superior to the kidney. The psoas muscle is inferior to the kidney. Make sure that you heel toe your transducer to make the kidney as horizontal in the image as possible. Compare the echogenicity of the kidney to the liver. The cortex should be more hypochoic compared. Continue moving the transducer towards the patient's center. Watch for the poles of the kidney to become rounded again. The central portion of the cortex will give away at the hilum. Watching for the kidney to make more of an old telephone shape, the cortex appears to split at the hilum. This is where the renal vein and ureter exit and the renal artery enters. The liver is still seen superiorly. The last image in long is a perfusion image. Make sure that the color box is open to cover the entire kidney. Turn your color gain up and PRF down to make the machine more sensitive to flow in the veins and smaller peripheral arteries. The transducer is angled through the mid and medial portion. This image should show the renal artery and vein and evidence of flow into the cortex. Turn your transducer 90 degrees and sweep up towards the liver. You should see the circular superior pole with very little to no renal sinus visible. Make sure that the parenchyma looks like kidney tissue. If you go too superior, it can begin to look like artifact or a liver lesion. Both of these images are appropriate for the superior kidney. To image the right kidney, try using the liver as a window. That will help you to identify the superior pole as well. Make sure that it is nice and rounded. It is appropriate to sector in on your transverse kidney. Keep moving inferior on the patient. Watch for the sinus to come in and then the hilum to appear. When the hilum is present and you have even cortex all the way around, this is the mid-transverse kidney. You will measure the kidney in transverse. Place your first caliper in the middle of the C to close the loop. Drag the second caliper across the kidney to cut the kidney in half. There should be even amount of kidney on either side. The kidney looks like a C when you are in the mid-transverse plane. Make sure that the hilum of the kidney faces the patient's center or the patient's left. Depending on the window you are using, you can make the kidney face the wrong way. The liver is sometimes seen anterior to the kidney at the mid-portion, and some midline vessels, like the IVC, can be seen towards the patient's left. The psoas and quadratus muscles are both visible in this image as well. A color image is also taken at the mid portion. This is again to show the renal artery and vein. A dilated ureter or extra renal pelvis would be more obvious in this plane, and the color image helps to highlight these non-vascular pathologies. Using color to help identify the hilum is also helpful for new scanners. Keep moving your transducer towards the patient's feet. You may need to turn your transducer slightly to keep the poles circular. Make sure that this image truly looks like renal parenchyma it is normally only surrounded by bowel and muscles. In these examples, we can again see that the choice of coming all the way out of the sinus and having a little sinus visible. A big mistake a sonographer can make is not moving all the way through the renal parenchyma during their sweep. The inferior poles of each kidney can be connected in what's called a horseshoe kidney, or exophytic cysts may be present. This image does not have major landmarks other than the presence of the inferior pole. Next, we're going to switch to the other side and take a look at the left kidney. Ergonomically and window-wise, the left kidney is better seen when the patient rolls up onto their right side facing you. 
This gives you access to an anterior, coronal, or posterior approach. Find the kidney and lung and sweep away from you until the poles are rounded and little to no sinus is seen. This image was most likely taken from an anterior window as there are no rib shadows in the image. Make sure that you are trying all of your windows when imaging the kidneys. The intercostal spaces are surprisingly helpful. Try to use the spleen as a window when you can. The left kidney can be tricky to visualize due to bowel. The mid kidney should be where the kidney is the longest. Kidneys should be horizontal on the screen when possible so that the ultrasound beam interacts with the renal parenchyma at the same time. An angled kidney image can cause part of the kidney to receive more attenuated sound, causing the kidney to look darker, which may mimic disease. You will measure the kidney after saving your still image. Measure from pole to pole for length and then perpendicular for the AP measurement. You can also measure the cortex in this image. Keep moving the beam towards you. Watch for the poles of the kidney to lengthen out and the cortex to be visible all the way around the echogenic sinus. You may see the spleen superior to the kidney. If the best window causes a shadow over your kidney, try centering the shadow up at the mid portion so you can measure the kidney and then staying in the mid plane, shift the shadow to see the area you couldn't see before and take another picture. Remember, we're trying to show the renal parenchyma to the reading provider. It's okay if you have to take extra pictures to accomplish this. The last picture in long is at the medial plane. Bring the beam towards you, watching for the cortex to break away at the hilum. Watching for the hilum to become visible is the best way to recognize the medial slice. The left kidney is often visualized in a coronal plane, so you'll see the hilum on the deep side of the kidney. Be careful how you're coming at the kidney. You can sometimes make the kidney look malrotated when you have the patient rolled. Grab another color picture to show perfusion. Again, you'll be slightly oblique through the kidney as we want the hilum to show the renal artery and vein, but we want the mid portion so we can see more of the peripheral vasculature. Open your color box to cover the entire kidney. Try to keep your kidney horizontal as possible to make sure that the Doppler shift can be detected all the way throughout the kidney. You can see in this image that the angle of the kidney is making it look like there isn't any blood flow to the superior pole. Turn the transducer to round out the kidney and move it to the superior portion of the left kidney. You may need to fit the transverse kidney in between rib shadows. Go through all of your windows and remember to try to find the best spot. The spleen may be anterior to the kidney depending on your patient's anatomy or which window you use. Make sure the parenchyma is well represented with little to no sinus visible. Slide the transducer towards the patient's feet and look for the kidney to take on a C shape. Due to the use of the coronal window, this may actually be more of a lowercase n shape and the hilum is facing deep into the image. This image is measured again, cutting the kidney in half through the hilum, so there is even parenchyma on either side. Note that the measurement is not transverse on the image, but transverse to the kidney. Some sonographers choose to do their AP measurements and cortex measurement in the transverse plane instead of the longitudinal plane. The transverse left kidney is the only image that appears to take on a mirrored appearance of the right kidney. You'll notice that if you do not see other organs in your images, there is not a good way to tell left from right, which is why it is imperative you label your laterality in paired organs and limbs. Take a color image to see the renal artery and renal vein and highlight the hilum of the kidney. The last image of the kidney is at the inferior pole. Continue sweeping towards the patient's feet. These two images again show the difference between little and no sinus visible. You should choose what best represents the kidney for your patient. The left inferior pole can often be obscured by bowel gas. Don't forget to try big breaths in or push a little harder to get bowel to move away from the kidney. Sectoring in on your transverse images will help to center the organ and draw the viewer's eyes to the region of interest.
Imaging the bladder is usually pretty quick. Make sure to sweep all the way through the bladder to see all the corners and evaluate all the walls. Finding the bladder in transverse is usually the easiest one beginning. Have your patient unbutton their pants and move them down just a bit. Use a towel to position the top of the pants to the top of the pubic hairline. With your notch to the patient's right, sweep down, looking for a fluid-filled sac. If you need to measure the bladder wall, the transverse view offers a good window to measure in the anterior or lateral walls. The normal bladder wall should be less than 3 millimeters when the bladder is distended, but can measure up to 6 millimeters with partial distension. The transverse bladder usually takes on more of a square appearance when full and a little bit more rounded when partially full. An empty bladder can be difficult to see. However, using the prostate and the uterus as landmarks may be helpful. Once you've identified the transverse bladder, turn your transducer 90 degrees and sweep side to side and look for where the bladder is longest. For many people, this will take on a triangular appearance. If the bladder is empty, it might be more helpful to identify the pubis symphysis or the pubic bone. It is a shadowing structure on the inferior border of the bladder seen at the arrow in the smaller image. The long bladder image can also be used for measuring the bladder wall. The distended bladder should be seen anterior to the uterus and prostate and should be superior to the pubis symphysis. Sweep beyond the bladder in both planes to evaluate for dilated ureters. Return the transducer to trans and angle towards the trigon or the inferior portion of the bladder. This is where the ureters connect to the bladder. Open your color box to cover the whole bladder and a little beyond. You should be able to see color in the iliac vessels on either side of the bladder. Holding this position, wait to see urine enter into the cavity. Both ureal jets should typically be seen within a five minute window. We've already covered a lot of tips for imaging the kidneys, but let's take another look at some helpful things to keep in mind while you're scanning. Use the liver and spleen. If you're finding yourself getting lost, remember that the kidneys show up in other pictures. Try going where you get the long right lobe interface picture. That'll help you to find the right kidney and then you can fine tune the image. The same is true for the spleen. Finding the long spleen and then angling inferior will give you a view of the left kidney. This will also remind you to use the spleen and liver as sonographic windows. Rolling your patient onto their side for either kidney allows the kidney to flop forward, which can be beneficial for the anterior window. It can also give you more access to the coronal and posterior windows. The kidney is best imaged when it's horizontal on the screen. Try heel towing or rocking your transducer to achieve this. The pole of the kidney that is further away from the transducer is the side of the transducer that should be pushed further into the patient to level out the kidney. An angled kidney is not wrong, but you'll have superior sound penetration if you can bring the kidney into one plane. This technique won't work on everyone, but you should always try to get the longest measurement of the kidney. That means finding the window that allows for more, what I call, pointy pulls. Once you get one pull to be sharp, don't move that side of the transducer. Pivot the opposite side to elongate and sharpen the other pull. The normal range of kidneys is 9 to 12 centimeters. However, most adults are going to be 11 to 12 or even more. I see a lot of beginning students get a 9 centimeter kidney on the right and then move on thinking it's in the normal range just to get an 11 centimeter kidney on the left. If your kidneys are not measuring symmetrically, it does bring up concern of unilateral disease. And lastly, remember that the kidneys sit at a slight angle in the body. So when a lot of people turn transverse, they just image straight down, forgetting to follow the angle of the kidney. If you do not follow the angle of the kidney, you will start to become oblique on the kidney, changing the appearance. Make sure to keep the poles rounded and watch for your mid portion to have even amounts of kidney around the hilum. Thank you so much for watching Sound and Nerd's Doodle Tutor series on the renal and bladder protocol. Be sure to check back for more drawings and other educational content.